So as I said in my last video, um, I had some vehicle issues this past week that kind of interrupted my schedule. So this past week, I was uh, only able to get in the gym four times when I typically go six times. So I had to uh, condense some days into um, to make up for missed workouts. So what I did... Um, my legs were still pretty torched from the King Kamali leg day workout I did on Friday. So on Sunday, I did a total upper body workout. Um, so that would have been me hitting upper body, uh, my upper body muscles twice this week. And um, I decided to do a upper body routine from Roy Hilligan. Uh, and he was a, a silver era bodybuilder. He was nicknamed the Smiling Superman. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about him. Um, he was born in California in 1922, um, but shortly after he moved to South Africa. Uh, so he was actually an American, but um, he's typically known as South African because that's where he grew up and, uh, you know, immigrated from. Um, but he kind of had a rough childhood. Uh, his father died at four, uh, and his mom placed, uh, Roy and his siblings in a, uh, orphanage. And then, um, at 15, he started learning to be an electrician. Uh, at 17, he had an accident where he fell four floors. He broke his ribs, his fingers, his wrist. And that's where he started weight training to recover from his injuries. And when he started, he was literally an 85-pound weakling that you used to see in the old, uh, you know, strength and muscle, the bodybuilding uh, magazines, the ads for the, you know, the weakling that gets the sand kicked in his face. He was literally an 85-pound weakling when he started. And then after three years of training, um, he started competing in weightlifting. And... He won the Mr. South Africa four times in 1943, in 1944, and then in 1946. And he came back and won it again in 1976 at the age of 54, which is very impressive. Um, his best win is considered the uh, AAU Mr. America in 1959. And, oh, I'm sorry, in 1951. Um, and he was the shortest Mr. America at five, six, his weight ranged from 175 to 185 pounds, but he was freakishly strong. Um, the workout that I did had some numbers attached to it, to the weight that he moved. And I was having to lift, uh, a little bit under that because he was so strong. Um, you know, he typically appeared on the covers of Strength and Health magazine, which was Bob Hoffman's magazine, and then also Iron Man magazine, which was Perry Raider's, um, you know, during the 40s and the 50s. Um, unfortunately, uh, in his later years, he got a bad rep reputation uh, and kind of tarnished his legacy uh, because he was known as a pervert. Um, he went to prison uh, in the years of 1987 through 1989 because he apparently uh, sexually assaulted uh, two of his uh, female clients when he was working as uh, a masseuse. And then uh, again, he had to, he spent basically all of the 90s in prison because um, he was personally training a family. And uh, he fondled a 21-year-old female uh, member of that family. So he ended up spending the entire 90s in prison for those offenses. Um, he was also known for being a, or, or at least claimed to be, uh, a vegetarian that was lacto-avo, which means that um, you know he also included milk and eggs in his diet. Uh, which is more believable that one could be on that kind of diet and make those kind of gains. But his claims of vegetarianism and even just being lacto-avo are called into question because there was a letter 
that was written to Strength and Health from him in 1946, where he claimed to eat a balanced diet of three meals, which included uh, lean meat. So, you know, his vegetarian claims are kind of uh, questionable there. Um, and I tend to think that, you know, people who make the vegetarian and vegan claim are probably supplementing their diet with meat if they've got great physiques. But that's just my take on it. Um, and then, unfortunately... Um, he, uh, died from a blood clot at 85. He, he ended up falling and hitting his head. Um, so it seems like he was accident prone from the accident from his youth and then dying that way. Um, he fell and hit his head and he died of a blood clot, uh, at the age of 85 in August of 2008. Still a very full life. Uh, the prison time was unfortunate, but, um, I did his workout routine I will get into that. Um, it seems like he had a really impressive uh, silver era career uh, in weightlifting and bodybuilding. Um, so I'll get into that workout and uh, give you my thoughts about it. Okay, so let's get into this uh, Roy Hilligan, the smiling Superman upper body workout. Um, now, Roy, you know, he's a silver era guy. Um, and it was pretty common in the silver era to see routines like this. Um, he did, uh, upper lower splits where one day he would work the entire upper body and the next, the lower body. Um, I'm more fond of breaking things down. Like I said, I like to go to the gym, um, five to six days a week. Uh, I had vehicle issues this past week, so uh, I missed a couple days. Um, so I had to condense uh, my upper body work into a single day to make up some time. Uh, so that's what I did on Sunday. So I picked this workout routine. And um, it basically designed to hit the entire upper body. Um, it was definitely uh, quite a bit of work. And, uh, since Roy pushed pretty heavy weight, I was trying to do the same by the end of it. Uh, I did have a hard time taking my shirt off. So, um, this was a pretty solid routine. Uh, let's go through it real quick. Uh, it starts off with back. Uh, you do barbell rows, four sets, uh, five to 10 rep range. Um, you're going to start with higher reps and then, um, you know, by the end of your, uh, you know, it's your fourth set, uh, you're pretty, you're pulling pretty heavy weight because you're only doing five reps. So keep that in mind. Uh, the next exercise is the one arm dumbbell row that you do on a bench. You just alternate, uh, you know, row with one arm and then uh, row with the other one. Uh, four sets of 10 reps. Um, I think I was pulling like, uh, you know, using 80, 90 pound dumbbell on these. Um, and you have two, uh, you're doing back, you have two row movements. Um, and that's the thing with doing a total upper body workout or a full body workout. You're only doing about two exercises per body part. Uh, I probably would have replaced uh, one of these row movements with like a uh, lat pull down or a, um, you know, weighted pull up. Uh, but that's one thing that I would do different. Uh, then we go to shoulders. We have a seated dumbbell lateral raise, two sets of 10, uh, seated dumbbell front raise, two sets of 10. Um, I kind of felt the shoulder work was a little bit, uh, you know, uh, not, not as sufficient. And again, I probably would have replaced the front raise with a uh, either a barbell press or a dumbbell press. Um, then we move on to chest. Uh, we have the bench press. Again, like with the barbell row, um, you're pushing some pretty heavy weight because your last set, you're doing five, uh, five reps, um, five to 10 rep range. So you're pushing some pretty heavy weight. Next is incline dumbbell flies. Now... I believe Roy was using a 70-pound dumbbell on these. 
I was working with uh, the 55s and 60s, so just a little bit under him. Uh, four sets of 10 reps. Um, and, like, he really did believe in, uh, you know, lifting heavy in these moderate rep ranges. Um, the next, we go on to biceps. And you actually have three bicep exercises here. Uh, so it seems like he put bicep development as a priority uh, in this workout routine. You do um, seated curls, four sets, 10 reps. Um, then you move on to barbell curl, two sets and 10 reps, which uh, you know I was lifting pretty heavy here. I think I was doing 120 pounds on the, uh, on the barbell curl. Um, concentration curl, Roy used a 50 pound dumbbell. He did uh, three sets of 10 reps. Um, I was using a 45 pound dumbbell and um, my uh, biceps started failing here during the second uh, uh, set. Uh, I was having to do some, uh, force myself to get the 10 reps uh, because I was starting to feel pretty smoked by this point of the workout. Um, then we move to uh, dumbbell extension, uh, which is your, your seated, or you could do the standing um, using a dumbbell to uh, extend the tricep overhead. Uh, we have four sets of 10 reps. Roy would amazingly use a 120 pound, um, 120 pound dumbbell. I think I was using 100 here. Um, and then we move on and finish with skull crushers. Um, in the workout, in Roy's workout, it's listed as a lying tricep extension. And you have to kind of account, there's going to be a difference in name uh, from the silver era to now. Uh, because a lot of exercises have multiple names for it. But it, what it is, is basically skull crushers. And uh, I was definitely... Uh, done by this point. Uh, four sets, 10 reps. Um, I believe I was probably working with like 110, maybe 100 pounds. Um, I rated this three out of five stars. Uh, definitely, uh, if you are a guy that has limited time in the gym, um, you have to condense your workouts. You might want to work, look into something like an upper body, lower body split. Um, I uh, rated it three out of five stars just because, as I said, I probably would have swapped some of the exercises out. Um, it also got three out of five because, like I said, I like splitting things up um, and, you know, only working about two body parts at a time, max three uh, when I'm uh, doing workouts, but uh, very solid routine. It was cool to step back in time to the, to the silver era and see how, um, you know, Roy Hilligan trained and built his physique. Um, <clears throat> it was a challenging workout because you're pushing, uh, you're, you just got to keep in mind on this routine, on his routine, that uh, you want to use a very challenging weight in these moderate rep ranges but yeah, solid routine. Um, if you're a guy who has limited amount of time, limited days in the gym, uh, look into these types of workouts um, because you could definitely gain on them. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I probably just would have, uh, due to personal preference, uh, you know, selected some different exercises. But there you go. Roy Hilligan, the smiling Superman. Looking up, look him up. Interesting guy. Uh, silver era, um, 1951, uh, Mr. America.